Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in this season. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last few episodes we've gone ahead and completed our conversion from the uh, multiple activity architecture that we had here between the list of characters here and then the character details page that also exists here as soon as it loads. Uh, these used to be two separate activities. Now they are just a single activity that abides by Jetpack's navigation components. It seems like we've actually hit a little bit of an error state here with that particular character or that network call. So we could go, we always go back and clean that up. But as you can see here, there is just another page other than this one. But also, if you notice, there are no animations here between destinations. And there are a handful of different ways to do this. But in particular, when we are working with the Jetpack navigation components, we have a simple way of actually implementing that within our nav graph here and we really can just take care of it all in XML and we don't have to modify any code. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Flipping over to the documentation here, I'll link this in the description of the video, there are basically four attributes or four animations that we can put on every single action in uh, our nav graph and the system will take care of the rest. So we have the option of animations for entering and exiting destinations and then also entering or exiting destinations via the pop action, meaning the user goes back, hits a physical back button, or does a back gesture, something along those lines. And it's quite simple here. It's literally as easy as just defining these attributes inside of the action that you are utilizing with the components and inside the library, and then the system will take care of the rest here. So let's go ahead and just quickly uh, dive into this. Checking out the code here, now we can define this action or modify this action here, excuse me, that has the, uh, takes the user from this page to this page here. Uh, it's just very simple, it snaps back and forth, there's no real animation at the moment, but we can add an enter animation here. And Android has a bunch of preset or pre-built animations, so we're just gonna use these to start and then we'll build our own shortly after that. But in order to enter this animation, we are going to do the fragment fade enter. And then for the exit animation here, we are also going to do a fragment fade exit. So if we go ahead and rerun this here, basically what we've done is define an enter and an exit animation. And so these are two animations, one for the fragment coming in, that is the enter animation, and one other for the fragment animating out, which is the main screen that has all these characters here. So this screen is supposed to fade to exit, and the new screen that's coming behind it, the character details, is supposed to fade to enter. And so if we click on a particular character here, we can see a little bit of this animation taking place. It's a little difficult because we have a loading state, because we don't necessarily have a whole lot on this page that they're navigating to. Uh, and then when you go back, it just immediately snaps back. There's no animation on the reverse. But if we look closely again, as I click on Morty Smith, or maybe I'll do Rick again because the data might be cached. We can see a little bit of the, yeah, a little bit of the information or a little bit of the animation. It's easiest to see this fragment fading away. And you can see the other one fading in. So we simply have basic animations operating at this moment. But again, we don't have animations on the reverse going back here. So let's go ahead and just add those in. And these are going to be the pop animations that are defined here. So the pop exit animation, we're going to fade to exit. And then the pop enter animation, we're going to fade to enter here. And so the pop exit animation, just gonna go ahead and rebuild this. The pop exit animation is going to apply the animation to the fragment that is leaving, that we are leaving when we navigate backwards. And then the enter animation is going to be applied to the fragment that's coming in to the foreground here. So again, if we click on Rick, we can see the other one fade in, this one, the other one fade out, this one fade in. And then if we go backwards here, we can kind of see a little bit of the transition. Yeah, it's a lot easier to see here when there's data on screen that we're navigating to. But you can see there's kind of a little bit of a blend. It's a very quick blend, but there is an animation happening. So this is great, this is awesome. Uh, and it's really that simple to accomplish animations. So let's go ahead and do a little bit more in the world of animations here and build our own animation. So inside of the resource folder here, we're gonna right click, hit new, 
uh, Android resource directory. I'm going to start, start typing the word anim and immediately it pops up. This is the animation resource directory that we are going to be creating all of our files uh, inside of, right? So we go ahead and right click on that directory. We get animation resource file and let's say slide in from right. Usually a good idea to be a little bit verbose here just so that you know it's obvious what the animation is doing without having to jump into it. We can very easily inside of this file add a little bit of a translate option here. And the uh, as we can see here, there are four different values that we can modify from X, from Y delta, and then 2X and 2Y delta here. Because we're just animating left to right, we don't have to worry about the Y destination and the Y coordinates. So we're just going to be working with the X uh, deltas here. So we're going to say from X delta 100% P and then to X delta 0%. I'm going to go ahead and just give this, uh, trying to put the duration here on the translate tag, but I'm actually incorrect here. It looks like we can put the duration here on the, um, the root tag here, the set. Very interesting, the integer config nav anim time. I'm going to use that real quick and just click into it. 150. Oh, that's very interesting. I never knew that uh, resource existed. I would typically use at Android integer config and they have the long, medium, and short uh, here. And so I think medium, okay, so the short is 200, medium is 400, and then the long is 500 here. So let's go ahead and just do the um, short just so we can, uh, maybe we'll do medium just so we can kind of see everything happening. But more importantly, I want to talk about this piece right here. Uh, so the from X delta, if you can imagine um, the other fragment that is going to come into this screen here, it's going to exist on basically outside of the frame of this emulator right here. So right on the right side here, we're going to go ahead and say from X delta 100% P. So basically having the left edge of this fragment line up with 100% of the width here, because again, we're in the X delta. So that fragment is going to start right here exactly on the edge of the screen and then it's going to go ahead and 2x delta go to 0% and it will just basically center or not center but it will move itself from right to left across the screen here and give that a appearance of you know existing off the screen and coming in from the right edge of the screen here. So let's go ahead and just make use of that inside of our nav graph and close this to get a little more room. We can set our enter animation here to be the slide in from the right. Now we're just very easily going to leave everything else the same. These exit and other pop and exits are just going to fade in and out for now. But we can clean that up in the future here. So the emulator is up and running again. And if we click on a particular uh, character, we should see the other screen come in from right to left here. So it's a little difficult to see, but you can see that um, loading spinner kind of coming in left to right. Again, it's just because we're animating something that doesn't have anything on screen. So it's a little difficult to see, but let's go ahead and just basically build the reverse for this particular animation happening here when we navigate backwards. And then things are gonna to start to kind of fall into place here. So we're gonna just go back into this uh, directory. We're gonna right click here. We're going to say slide in from left. And it's going to look very similar to this, so we're just going to copy all of it and paste it in. But instead, uh, from the left here, we're going to say negative 100% P, which will go ahead and put the fragment completely off the edge of this screen. And then to zero, which will push it in from the left side of the screen going to the right. This will make hopefully a little bit more sense if you're not following in a second when we run it here. But I'm also going to go ahead and add another little uh, animation that we need just to get everything looking perfect. So this last one here that we're gonna need is the slide out to right. <clears throat> and again, we're just copying and pasting everything in there. We're going to have the 0% there, and then 2x delta, we're going to set 100% P here. So hopefully if you are following, 
you can realize that that would exist basically how this fragment is here. But then when the animation takes place, it's going to push the X direction 100% of the screen. So it's going to push this uh, left edge of our fragment all the way to the right and give the appearance of shifting from left to right, or in our case, sliding out to the right here. So now all we need to do is set these up inside of our action. So the pop exit animation when we're leaving the character detail screen is going to be slide out to the right. The enter animation coming back is going to be slide in from left and we're just going to leave a little bit of a fade here for now. And so we're rebuilding here. Hopefully everybody's following what's going on here inside of the action, uh, inside of these different attributes that we're setting here. But if we go ahead and click on Morty Smith now, we'll see the background, the other page just fade out and this one came in. But the, I guess, nicest animation that we'll see is this one happening here where we're gonna basically get this little window effect where both of them in tandem are working together. So one fragment is navigating left to right. The other fragment is navigating, again, left to right, but off the screen. So you kind of get this little shifting animation, uh, if you will, that kind of makes it look like the screen is moving or you're seeing a little bit of a window into uh, a larger or wider screen here. So I guess we can actually go ahead and also do this. Uh, yeah, so if we make the slide out left, we can get everything perfect here. So again, we'll leave this at zero, and then this is going to move to negative 100. We'll just think about that for a second. I think that's good. <clears throat> and instead of fading here, we're going to use that slide out to left. And so now we're going to get in both directions here when we're animating forward and backwards, we're going to get this little window sliding effect that kind of creates a pretty cool animation that, um, that I at least enjoy. I think it's aesthetically pleasing here. So as we click on Summersmith, we'll see this entire screen shift from the right side to the left and then the other one coming in, which will just be a loading spinner, but you know, you get the idea. Right, so you kind of see that it works together and then this back navigation, it looks proper, right? Because it looks like maybe you're flipping a page in a book or something along those lines and it looks like everything is kind of, you know, working as it should, right? It's not too, ch it's not choppy at all. Uh, and, and the same animation that you get as you navigate deeper in a list, uh, you get when you come out of that list as well. So it gives the user a very good sense of how to navigate inside the app and immediately giving them an obvious transition like, okay, we, we've, we've drilled into something and now we're going back out. And so there we have it. Uh, it's really quite simple to incorporate these animations inside of your app. As you can see here, you can just modify all of these four attributes as you see fit for each action that you define in your nav graph and the system will take care of the rest. As we've done in all of these here, we translate from X delta to X delta, but you can also do the exact same thing here with the from Y delta and then the to Y delta to give an animation of something coming up from the bottom of the screen and then going down out the bottom of the screen or coming up and then going up again and exiting the top of the screen. So you can really define um, however you would like, you know, your, your navigation to look, or you could even do a combo of the two you know, where you're navigating in both X and Y directions, it might get a little confusing, but you might be able to build something also very interesting here. But I'm pretty happy with this. I truly enjoy this little animation of just kind of going left to right here. I think it just makes the most sense. And um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. So if you made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like on the video to let me know that you've been enjoying the content. If you do notice you are not subscribed and have enjoyed what you've seen so far, please do subscribe so you don't miss out on anything else that I put out. And uh, yeah, have a good rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.